<laughs> oh, nice to be uh, out west again. I uh, I used to live in Seattle, Washington. I moved to New York a couple years ago. I left a city that has a high suicide rate for one that has a high homicide rate. <laughs> Guess I'm just not a do-it-yourself kind of person. Um, <laughs> I was born and raised in Spokane, Washington, a, a smaller city. Our, our zoo in Spokane was named the worst zoo in the United States by USA Today. This is pretty bad, too. Most of the animals in the zoo are native to the Spokane area. <laughs> they just happened to be on the grounds when the zoo was built. Um, <laughs> we named our airport in Spokane the Spokane International Airport, even though there are no international flights. We, uh, we got the idea for the name from the International House of Pancakes. <laughs> I miss my home state occasionally. Uh, living in New York has hardened me. You know, when I first moved there, I was full of compassion. I gave money to every panhandler I saw. Now a head could come rolling up the sidewalk with a cup in its mouth and I wouldn't be moved. <laughs> Why should I give you money? I saw half a head on Broadway. <laughs> now you think you got it bad? This guy couldn't even roll. Front row who, who hated me immediately and started under his breath, very clever, said he was gonna, ch he was gonna, he was gonna chop me up and bury me along the side of the road, and he would say it just so no one could hear it except for me. And I'm trying to tell jokes, and he's very, you know, this is what I'm a man. No one will ever find you. You'd be in tiny little pieces. No one's ever. Got, and you know, there's no heckler line for, for you know, a bludgeoning. Uh -huh. there's no, you know, there's. Last week I had to take my cat into the vet. He had been limping. That says that he has a bad knee. I didn't even know cats had knees. They might not. I know nothing about the feline anatomy. If the vet told me the cat needed new batteries, I couldn't argue. I'm ignorant. I'm at the mercy of the vet. The only negotiating tool I have is that kittens are free. And if the vet tries to charge me too much, I can show him the want ads. Look, I can get a new one for nothing. I mean, let's face it, high vet bills make it difficult to respect the sanctity of life. I mean, Fluffy might be cute and you might love Fluffy, but Fluffy is not getting a liver transplant. <laughs> you know, there are no donor lists for kitty cats. It weighs on our conscience, though, when we put our pets to sleep. That's why we say things like, we decided to put Fluffy out of his misery. No, what you decide was that Fluffy's company isn't worth $500. <laughs> So I'm here. I'm not a very spiritual person. I'm really not. Athletes are very spiritual, though, if you haven't noticed. After each game, the winning players always give credit to God while the losers blame themselves. You know, just once I'd like to hear a player say, Yeah, we were in the game until Jesus made me fumble. <laughs> he hates our team. <laughs> Jesus hates us. I don't watch many sports on television. I watch bowling occasionally. I feel sorry for the commentators in bowling. Sports so predictable, just a ball and an alley. No defense, no obstacles, no strategy. So, Jim, what do you think you'll do on this one? Well, I'd say he's gonna try to knock those pins down. That's what I'd do. It's hard to watch television on the weekends, you know? You get bowling on Saturday and then Sunday you have those church programs. You ever watch those? You know the ones where the minister's always spoken with the Lord the night before? <laughs> Poor Jesus. First he's crucified, then he has to spend his Saturdays with Jerry Falwell. <laughs> I don't understand these couples who get married and then continue to work out and eat healthily. I mean, what's the point of getting married if you can't let yourself go? It's not as if you have to be attractive anymore. The race is over. Take off the uniform. <laughs> I, I don't enjoy dating anymore. It takes too much time and effort. You know, you have to make that phone call, maybe send flowers, go to dinner, catch a movie. It'd be so much easier if we could just swim upstream or make a loud clacking noise. <laughs> It's a wearisome process searching for a mate. I mean, after a while, you can't help but lose some of your enthusiasm. Dating is like gathering fruit. You know, when you first start out, you pick only the best apples, but by the end of the day, you're throwing anything into your basket. <laughs> Breaking up is what I hate the most. I, uh, I dread the talks you have when the relationship ends. One woman, when she broke up with me, told me that I was too insecure. I thought, great, and this is going to help. <laughs> uh, I feel a lot better about myself now. You're very vulnerable when you fall in love, especially when you tell the person for the first time because you don't know how she's going to respond. She might say, well, I think you're pretty special, too. 
didn't say anything about being special. Said that I love you. <laughs> I know, and I love you, but in a different way. See, my love for you is the kind of love that disappears as soon as you leave this room. 